Na kell, hogy lehet oda? Abban a lesz.
Just to give the dancers and the musicians a bit of a rest, I think we call on a Jimmy Gavigan for a song. So, Jimmy, would you approach the bandstand, please? There's a beautiful isle in the Western Ocean. It's an island so lovely, so pretty and grand. And his name fills its sons and his daughters with sadness when it's heard on the shores of some far distant land. Oh, Ireland so lovely, the proud heart. Oh, Tales he wrote, the home of the po poet, the warrior and sage. Oh, the bard and the chieftain no longer will cheer her. They live forever on his story's page. Sure, I love every blade of green grass on your mountain, every leaf on your tree, every rock on your strand. Oh, I love the green shamrock and pure crystal fountain, and I love you forever, my own native land. You once were a proud and a glorious nation. Your scholars and scribes were renowned far and wide, till darkness came over brought sad transformation. Your men to first start and their home were destroyed. They turned out your children to fear their great power. They tried hard to break them those long years ago. And the Irish they found were like soft leafy flowers. And the more they would pluck them, the faster they grow. Sure, I love every blade of green grass on your mountain, every leaf on your tree, every rock on your strand. Sure, I love the green shamrock and pure crystal fountain. And I love you forever, my own native land. And I love you forever, my own native land. Thank you very much, Jimmy. And uh, just again to welcome all the musicians. I think we might have some musicians down there who haven't found their way up here and uh, we will certainly make room for anyone down there that wants to come up and join us. And I'd like to welcome here tonight as well the PJ Curran, the chairman of Westmead County Board of Coalthus, and uh, one of our own people from Westmead, Colman Moynihan, Colman Mwinyakan, Athayna Cahirlach, our Cola Lion. Colman is the chairman of the Leinster Council, so we're delighted to have them here, and some other people from Westmead County Board as well. Just to get you back into the dance and do it and take it nice and easy, we'll do a couple of waltzes. <laughs>
Well, the, the, the front row here was like the front row in a church. For a long time, nobody wanted to sit in it. But we have two musicians in it now, and I'm going to get them to play a couple of tunes. Arla Corcoran and Martin Hickey. So give them, give them a blast there, folks.
you very much, from Martin and Orla. Now, there was another man that was at all those sessions long ago, and sadly he's no longer with us, but he played a significant role in Castletown Coltis over the years and uh, helped us to keep the show on the road. And that man I'm talking about is Sean Cowley. And uh, just to commemorate Sean Cowley's memory here tonight, I'd like to do a little recitation if I can remember it all. It is one that Sean used to do here and it all has went down very well. And it's called The Competition. Now, they say that competition brings the best out to the fore, and perhaps this confrontation did just that, if nothing more. An uncouth, unholy contest held in secret like a jewel. It was the piddling competition every evening going from school. Now, the rules were fairly simple and to each contestant clear. Which boy could piddle farthest from the top of Casey's pier? The youngsters were encouraged to take part in the display just to show the heights they could aspire to when manhood came their way. Now, they couldn't hope to outdistance with their limited machines the high volume artillery of lads in early teens. But they got their compensation when a classmate, tops at pros, couldn't piddle even far enough to keep the splatter off his toes. Now, the venue for this contest, untrod by man or beast, was an old redundant haggard owned by Casey's, all deceased. And the winner every evening, without fear of friend or foe, was a curly, well-fed gossoon called Tommy McEnroe. Now, he never took the stand till last, then he got her in a hump. And for volume, power and distance, he put shame to Casey's pump. Then one day a brazen ten-year-old called Mary Jo Maguire thought she'd view the competition from inside of Casey's buyer. She watched the whole proceedings and the contestants one and all through a crack that time had burrowed in the ancient buyer wall. She never made a murmur throughout the whole display until McEnroe had put his powerful water gun away. Then she strutted out among us like a wide-eyed cockatoo and she shouldered up to Tommy and she says, you think you're great, don't you? Then she clambered on the rostrum like a hippo in distress, unmindful how the wind had caught her little cotton dress. She planted both feet firmly on the edge of Casey's pier and she started the proceedings with a rebel rousing cheer. Now, her stance was most unorthodox. Well, well buckled at the knees, and she adjusted her machinery by hand to suit the prevailing breeze. Well, the volume was colossal, beating Tommy by a quart, and seven paces further with her introductory squirt. <laughs> then she done some wicked dribbles and some fancy turnabouts, and we all stood there like Egypts, looking at her with our mouths. Then she turned the power hose on us and we scattered far and wide. And there and then that ill-fated piddling contest died. Well, those classmates are all scattered now and I've been married several years and Tommy McEnroe, long since a priest, would you believe, and serving in Algiers. He comes back home to visit one year in every three and he spends the whole vacation talking olden times with me. We talk about the school days, the hurling and the crack, the teacher Mr. Brady and the grocer Paddy Mac and the woodbines that we teacher Mr. Brady and the grocer Paddy Mac and the woodbines that we bought and smoked at pennies two for five and the monitor Miss Cooney, ninety eight and still alive. And the day we fought the tinkers with Billy Joe and Mickey Craig, but the sins of Casey's haggard, we avoid them like the plague. But last year when Father Tom came home, we chatted every day and my missus, for a little treat before he went away, thought she'd cook an evening meal for Father Tom and me. So we sat down at the table and I turned on the old TV. Do you remember Charles Mitchell? He had a face built for sad news. 
There was war and desolation, strikes and every kind of blues. And some mother Philomena, a heroic Irish nun, was being honoured in the Vatican for something great she'd done. Well, we were sitting, chatting, and to the details paid no heed until he mentioned Castletown Gagan in the county of Westmeath. That mother Philomena, says my missus from the fire, you two should have known her. Wasn't she Mary, John Maguire? <laughs> well, I looked at Father Tommy, and he gathered in a hoop, and I pebble dashed the table with a mouthful of me soup. <laughs> well, the laughter was contagious, like a terrible disease, and poor old Father Tommy there with his head between his knees. My missus was disgusted. Well, she knew I was a beast, but surely she thought she could have expected something better from her priest. But Father Tom regained composure, and he whispered in my ear, that's the one that bet my record years ago on Casey's pier. There's a moral in that story, contradict it if you can. Competition brings the best out, in a woman or a man. <laughs> Now, that was in memory of Sean Cowley, who was for many years, I think up to the time he sadly passed away, he was vice chairman of the branch here. Now, I think we call on some of the backbenchers to come out to the front here. It's your turn, Bernadette, and your sidekicks there, Bowrons and whatever, Aurons, Bowrons, whatever. Come on up here and tell two tunes for us.
going out for you. One more. One more, sir. who has a, a little contribution to make. Would Noel Cooney be here and would he please come to the microphone? Somebody told me that David Joe only gets his hair cut now and again. And he got a cut this evening, I see. Well, badly cut, but he got a cut anyway. <laughs> but uh, someone said to me he falls asleep every time he gets his hair cut. So I just, like we're from Tullamon, the first time I ever, ever heard of Tommy Joe, or David Joe, was about 20 years ago from Tommy Joe. And he says, uh, you have something to hear. And, and I heard him, and I've been following him ever since. Gives me the not and only the height of abuse. But uh, you're, the, uh, you're, uh, you're lucky to have him, let me say that. And it's, uh, it's a privilege to have known him for the years. And I just put a few words together. 
So some lot of good things going to be said about him. Some of these are good and some of them are not so good. So, and it's just called Davy Joe. I want to say a few words about a man that you all know. Of course the man in question is the famous Davy Joe. Born in 1941, that makes him 64. Jesus, I feel I know him longer. Sure, he thought that he was more. <laughs> he was raised an only son. I believe someone told me that. That's right, I remember now. A spiced little old brat. <laughs> His first love was the music, or so I am told, that he could play the accordion when he was only four year old. But I heard a lady dispute that. I think her name was Jill. She says, how could he play the accordion at four? He can't even play it still. <laughs> then a man said, Dave, he's great at reels and even a better jigger. But that lady said, I think he'd be better off if he said driving that I will digger. <laughs> David Joe, he went to school in Streamstown, but I heard he wasn't very bright. Then a schoolmaster called Jack Garland. Soon he put you right. He made you do your homework. And if it wasn't right, it's no secret that I'd cheer. He'd bait you around the classroom with a big leg off a chair. That happened. Davy's father played the bower on with the chieftains, but I'm led to understand that Davy first played himself with the Doreen Cayley band. He thought he was going to be a superstar, living in a mansion and driving fancy cars. So he started up his own band called the Ushna Stars. But soon he came back to earth he wasn't doing all that well. Teamed up with Kathleen and Johnny and the forum carousel. No high-tech equipment, but the music, it was fine. I think the sweetest accordion I ever heard him play was tied up with binder twine. <laughs> Implied by Westmead County Council, so I won't mention any work. No wonder he could travel every night from Westmead to Dublin, from Donegal to Cork. Donegal, Carousel were now a household name all over the land. A joy for Seth and Cayley dancers, this simple three-piece band. Davy Joe, worn out with all the late nights, he slept the rest of life. So. Where did the four daughters come from? <laughs> I think I'll have to ask Teresa. That's his wife. <laughs> now, I don't want to start any rumours, but I think I will dig deep. Maybe Davy Joe has a special skill of making babies while asleep. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. <laughs> so... Let me thank all the past and present teachers who helped make the music flow. John Joe Coffey, Jim Gannon, Helen Comfer, Eilie Sheegan, and many, many others who helped out Davy Joe. I could go on forever, but I think I better end. Sure, I wonder after this, will I have air a friend? So, I thank you, Davy Joe, for the enjoyment and the cheer. For the happiness you brought us all for many a long year. May God give you strength that you'll continue for many a long day. There's not too many like that has ever come our way. Thank you very much. <laughs> I forgot to mention that in, in, in real life, Noel is a detective. <laughs> well, he's not, but he might as well be. Now, I've got to call on three more musicians that used to be here 
20 years ago, they won't mind me saying it. They're down here in the back somewhere. Mary McCormack, Patsy Keenan, and uh, Packy Campbell is around somewhere as well. They might give us a few tunes. <laughs> um, a cup on tea and what goes with it. Hey, come up here. I can't get my phone back here and there.
Okay, well, thank you very much, Mary, Patty, and Patsy. Now we're all going to take a break, and uh, the uh, supper room is open for business there. So if you like to, all to don't all rush the doors at the one time, but uh, if you, could we have uh, everybody uh, that can come out here, please? Wait the night, and uh, we're going to ask Davy to. Uh, no, he won't eat it at all. He's going to cut it. Bring over the table there. <laughs> yeah, oh God, yeah. It seems a pity to cut it, but that's what it's there for. Yeah, well, we're going to start do, do a few little things here now anyway, and the first person I'd like to call on is uh, Seamus Siri, the chairman of the branch of Cortes here in Castletown. Just a, a quick word from Seamus. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want not going to train you to hold down because there's a few other people that going to say a few, few words to you. I'd just like to, first of all, welcome you all to this celebration that we have here uh, 20 years since the, the revival of the branch in, 80, in uh, 1985. And I think uh, there's one man, like, without him, uh, there would have been no revival, and that is, of course, Davy Joe, and that's what the night is about here tonight. And I'd like to thank him on, on behalf of the branch for all he has done down through the years. Not alone for, for, for music itself, but for he had some great lessons going here, music lessons for, for children, and there was a, a lot of the musicians here tonight are, are projects of, of those lessons. And I would like to thank him most sincerely on behalf of the branch. So now... <laughs> and hopefully that we will have him with us for a long more number of years. So now I'll hand you back to Dick. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much, Seamus. No, I'd just, I just like to say that uh, we're celebrating 20 years since the branch was revived, but a uh, little bit of history. It didn't start in 1985. There was a branch here, I think from what research I did, it started in 1978, and the details that were available to me suggest that the first chairman was Christy Dalton, who is here tonight with us, and he's vice chairman at the moment. Come on, Christy. But uh, the, the, from 1978 and 1985, the man that would be most associated uh, with the branch would have been the late lamented Joe Fallon. Joe was the heart and soul of the branch for a number of years, but despite Joe's and the committee's best efforts, things, the membership had dropped and uh, it was getting hard to keep going. And then the man came along that revived it, and that was Davy Joe. Around the, about the month of February, I think it was in 1985, around, around this time, he organised a series of big sessions. And that led on to, I think it was in the month of April, there was a meeting here attended by the county board officers. Frank Bracken, I know, was at it anyway. But I have to say that I wasn't at it. I, I was playing it cute, you see, because I heard there was a meeting coming up, and uh, I was afraid I'd get a job, so I stayed at home. <laughs> but that, that didn't save me, because the night after the meeting, I got a phone call. Hello, this is Davy Joe. We want you. <laughs> so, Davy, 20 years later, I'm still here. and <laughs> the, They can't get rid of me now, and I can't get out of it, but it's, it was great 20 years. Um, before I go any farther, there's another man here I'd like to call him to say a few words. Uh, Colin Minahan, who is uh, currently the chairman of the Leinster Council of Cortes. Come on. I'm going to say, i as you know, Colts has, has been in existence for 
Rex is Craig Dolvian. It's 53 years. But during a lot of that time, we've had a run in with the Arts Council. And basically, I was just here tonight and looking and saying, this is the type of effort that the Arts Council should be not only looking for, they should be encouraging. Yeah. When I see the young people, young musicians around me, and then I look at the less young musicians and the ancient musicians, not looking at Dick in particular, <laughs> I think this is what tradition is about. I was in school with you. <laughs> Teaching me, okay. But, you know, that's tradition. This is the tradition that counts, a community tradition. Not just music. I know music is a good part of it, most of it, but it's, it's more about spirit. The voluntary spirit that, to a certain extent, is lacking in today's new world. Oh. And a num show, who all them couple of folk are all for David Joe. David Joe to me always was on the go. I'd see him in the council vehicle. His head would stick out the window and it'd be a big cheery wave, and that would be maybe at half nine in the morning. And then maybe at a Kelly that night, David would be playing. And we playing, and I suppose it'd be maybe three o'clock when he get to bed. But up he was early the next morning, with a big smile again. Provided, of course, he didn't park in the wrong place or knock down a sign, which I saw somebody doing. When we get the good brunt of David Joe's eloquent speech, <laughs> and we all know what that is. <laughs> Nevertheless, from a coldest point of view, I'm delighted to be invited here. Delighted to say a few words on behalf of Leinster Council. Uh, that this is the type of work that we encourage. This is the type of work that we were looking forward to. And if it can be replicated in every branch in Ireland, then there's nothing can stop the tradition from not only surviving, but developing over the next 50 years. Marshin, Shina Meta Talaragam, Akaran, Ala, Ara, Bulabas, Arish Moore, Tunfar Usulshaw, David Joe Fallon. And just for the record, we were actually in the same class in school. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was. Anyway, he always likes to have a dig at me. Just to go back again to the branch, when, when we got on the go in 1985, I think the first thing that David Joe set about doing was getting a class uh, uh, for young musicians. And he contacted Ellen Comerford and uh, he said that if he could get, I think it was 25 musicians, the class would be viable. Within a couple of months, he had 75 or 80 musicians. And in later years, with, both with Ellen Comerford and Ailish Egan, who took over when Ellen left, he had at one stage over 100 musicians. And uh, during that time, and following on from those classes, pupils of the class, achieved, to my recollection, five All-Ireland titles, numerous Leinsters that I couldn't count, and I couldn't even think about all the number of county titles for music and for singing. And we also had, uh, we ran a Kelly band for a few years, the, a senior Kelly band, which got to, it was placed well in four uh, Leinster flas. We got third on, in two of them and narrowly missed qualifying for uh, the Black Yall and the Heron. But uh, we had great crack with the, those days. We <laughs> I remember we went down to uh, the first Leinster Fla we went to and on the day two people didn't turn up and Davy Joe went out with a lasso and brought in two more who never played with us before and got up with us and we were placed third that day. So obviously he made a good choice in his two musicians that he picked up. Um, he organized Kelly classes and set dancing classes. And uh, he organized junior Kelly bands as well, who won two All-Irelands in Sloga. And uh, not alone did he organize and pick the musicians, but a lot of the time he actually drove considerable distances to pick up musicians who hadn't their own transport. 
the blue van was seen in many parts of the country around those times and both before and after the practices. So he certainly clocked up the miles. And the, during that time also in Kjol and Gebri, which was the winter uh, competition run by Coltis, we won, uh, on the same day, we won two dancing titles, uh, figure dance and set. And uh, we won a third title after us, as far as I can remember. But the biggest undertakings of all, I suppose, were the three county flags we ran in the 80s and up into 91, I think it was. And uh, very successful ones. And despite bad weather, we seemed to manage usually to get the, a break in the clouds for the flag. So there were great days anyway. And uh, I think that we should also mention on an ongoing basis, the, the monthly sessions that we had here, where we had huge crowds, great lot of musicians, and we always had, inside in the supper room, there was always a cup on tea, and not just a sandwich, but there was cakes and tarts and buns and scones and everything. And one of the chief architects of all of that was Debbie's wife, Teresa, who made, must have made thousands of buns in the course of those years. And I just have to say, I'm not going to keep you here much longer. I have a few other little things I want to say. Um, my first recollection of Davy Joe. As Noel Cooney said earlier on, he went to school in Streamstown. And he was a little bit ahead of me. But I remember when I think I was in high infants. And I thought it was the greatest thing I ever heard was Davy Joe brought in a melodeon. And he was playing tunes in the school, in the classroom. And... Uh, I'd say now he was more than four at the time, as Noel said, but uh, he certainly, to my young ear, I had never heard anything like it, and uh, I think he, he never looked back from that, and it wasn't, it wasn't a huge length after that that he actually started to play in the Dora Heen Kelly band, but uh, that, that's early recollections of Davy. And uh, another little note I have here to say to you is that tonight's proceedings are being videoed, as you know, and we have a Kelly tomorrow night, the video camera will be present, and we're putting together a series of pieces of older footage of uh, Davy's uh, musical escapades. And uh, we're going to be bringing out a video in the near future. And well, we'll let you all know about that when the time comes. But it will be available. And it should be a good one. Now, the moment of uh, importance. We have a little presentation to make. And I'd like to call on uh, PJ Kern, the chairman of the Speed County Board of Quarters, to do the needful for us. PJ Gormagat. Well, uh, you can see Ali Gallagher, he smiled when I saw him, he saw me getting the watch. Because Ali is my boss. <laughs> so I suppose I've no excuse now in the morning. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, a few years ago, I loved to shoot at the present time. Uh, I didn't know. I was told that it was a session, just an ordinary session. And, uh, this is something that I don't know. I don't think I'm entitled to all this praise and everything like that. Sure, we've done our best anyway. And it's great to see so many young people that started off here. Uh, we have them all in the back. I won't go through them all. The young people that I saw coming in here would not have noticed them. And they're top class musicians today. Like, that's a great achievement. 
and it's, it's grand to see it, you know. But uh, someone said about the band, I, uh, sure, we are longer than 20 years playing in the band, but unfortunately we are. Uh, I think the first night I played up there with that band, I was 14, and I was 64 last January, so that'll give you an idea. I think I missed about one or two weekends, I think, when I got married, that I wasn't playing. After that, no holidays, no nothing was done. We live a de desperate life altogether. But, <laughs> but uh, Johnny Corrigan, Johnny is 36 years drummer with me. Yeah. And, uh, Uh, Kathleen is not altogether that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen is ten year with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. And we're still going strong, thanks be to God. But uh, we great how times, both here in Hortus, with uh, classes, and in the, especially in the band, when it started off, uh, I was just telling the lads in the night, we wouldn't be doing a whole lot, you know. But we'd, there was nine of us in the band, going around at night, uh, playing for a tenor. Now, that was ten between us all. That was in ten apiece. <laughs> a pound apiece. And uh, we used to have to hire Johnny Mullen, Lord have mercy on him. Uh, he used to drive us. Many nights, he didn't get paid. But uh, then I came on to, I was old enough to buy a car. It was going big at this time, you know. So I bought an old Anglia car for £150. Bought in the higher purchase. I think my mother paid for it in the wind-up. <laughs> but uh, I was telling the lads in there tonight, times would be very bad at that time. I, mean, I was just saying the young people going nowadays, how handy it is. They all have good instruments, good ways of travelling and everything. But uh, I had this old Anglia car anyway, and... We're coming home from playing one night, and uh, there'd be about seven or eight of us in this car and room for four, you know. But uh, we're in upon this fire road, and the next thing, bang! Oh, jeez, a flat wheel, you know. So we got out anyway, and the four wheels was hard. We looked; the spring was all right. We said, "What the hell was it?" So we drove in and drove home anyway. So the next day, I went out to investigate what was was. And the spare wheel was at the bursting in the boot. <laughs> that is the truth. So that'll give you an idea of the transport we had at that time. But later on then, uh, later on Mick Kirby fixed me up with a, an ESB van he had. And uh, this yellow van, you could see ESB on the side of it for going along. But we had a great whole time anyway, and we all enjoyed ourselves. And praise God we'd be able to keep going for another few years. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, as I said earlier on, very much the part and parcel of the catering arrangements was Teresa, and it was actually, Davy always said, you'll have good sessions if you have good uh, catering, and Teresa and her colleagues always made sure that people were well fed and uh, behind every great man there's a woman and Teresa is here and I'd like to call on, uh, who is it, Derek, who, so we have a, a little bunch of flowers for Teresa, it's a, Seamus you better do it, are you, good man, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, you're not your Seamus here. I hope he didn't take pleasure in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We haven't uh, much more to do. You, you're all mad to get back dancing and playing and everything. So just, just to put a, a finish to it, my few words. 
just sort of the general thought that crosses my mind is that in Ireland we're great at finding things to say about people when they've passed on. And I think it's only proper that we save we, we don't we don't save it until then for Davy Joe. I'm not saying that he's going to be passing on shortly. <laughs> he looks he in in his in his uh, um, travels with the, his various bands. He uh, must have chalked up millions of miles, and he looks good for a good few hundred thousand more. Oh yeah, I have to tell you, I remember a long, long time ago, Seamus of Wailan, Seamus Whelan, I was in school with him, and he was telling me a little story about one time, Davy, Davy won't mind me telling this, Davy, somebody, he called into Billy, Billy used to play in the band with Davy, and uh, he called in one evening and he said to, to Billy, I had an inquiry, somebody wanted to know, had we any dates? Now, things apparently weren't going that great at the time, it was in the early days. And uh, Billy says to Davy, he says, uh, send them the calendar. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we are saying nice things tonight, and no doubt in 40 or 50 years' time we'll be saying them again, and if we're here when Davy passes away. But uh, Davy... <laughs> Davy, long may you continue with the bands and the music and in life generally. I hope you enjoy it and Gamara uh, Thukhead. Now that's that formal bit done. We're going to get back to the dancing now and I'm going to call out, uh, let's see, who am I going to put the, the spotlight on now? Um, Maybe Tom, the two Toms here, Tom Flood and Tom Skelly, and uh, they're going to lead off with a, a bit of a, what do you do lads? Do a set. Do a set. Yeah, a fan set. A fan set.
there and we're going to call on a solo dancer. Would uh, Karen Meehan like to give us a bit of a step, please? <laughs> Thank you, Karen. First time I ever saw him that I can clearly remember was at one of these sessions 20 years ago. Maybe he'd come up and give us a song. Would you, Tony Kenny, would you come up and give us a song? <laughs> at the age of 80 plus years, ago, years old or young, Tony will be performing in the National Concert Hall in Dublin on the 30th of March. Oh, thank you very much. He thank qualified you. for the, uh, act, the uh, he's the awfully representative in the Active Age Talent Contest, selected by Kevin Hawk there a couple of weeks ago in Tullamore. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Whatever Dick says now. James McCafferty, a fiddler of renown, who was invited to a hooli just outside the town. So he shaved and dressed that evening and was stepping out the door when he tripped and dropped his fiddle and it smashed upon the floor. Oh. His heart stood still, his face went white, his head was in a spin. For he could go nowhere that night without his violin. What can I do, he said at last, as he viewed the sad remains. Unless I go to Sweeney's now and borrow Mary Jane's. So he threw his leg across the pike and he cycled up the lane. But as he went, he was less content about asking Mary Jane. If I thought she wouldn't help me out, well, I'd just as soon not go. Ah, but when she hears what happened, I'm sure she'll not say no. But yet me father always said them Sweeney's weren't too free. Well, I'm damned if I'll give that bitch the chance of saying no to me. I don't know who to think they are, but I could let them know. They hadn't the means to scratch themselves not very long ago. Now they say that muck flies very high if you strike it with a stick. And upstarts like them Sweeney's are enough to make you sick. But they'll not make a fool of me and of Mary Jane's within. Well, I'll tell her fair and square where she can stick her violin. Now Mary Jane came to the door with a smile upon her face. For Patrick James was always welcome around the Sweeney's place. Ah, good evening, Patrick James, says she, are you coming in a while? You can go to hell, says Patrick James, Miss Sweeney dropped her smile. Only her smile now, she dropped. I'll not come through your door again, he roared and turned to go. For I know damn well before I'd ask that the answer would be no. You can take your heap of woodworm that's hanging on your wall. And where the monkey stuck his nuts, you can stick it, bow and all. Right up! Right up! Thank you very much, Bob. Pause in life's pleasure and count its many tears. 
Failures of sorrow with the poor. There's a sound that will linger forever in our ears. Oh, hard time, come again no more. Till the sound, the sigh of the wind. a grudge that has wafted across the troubled will. Tis a will that is heard upon the shore. Tis a dirge that is murmured around the lonely grave. Oh, heart, come again no more. Tis a sound the sigh of the weary Hard time, hard time Come again no more Many days you have lingered Around my cabin door Oh, hard time Come again no more While we seek mirth and beauty and music light and gay, there are frail forms fainting at the door. Though their voices are silent, their pleading looks will say, Oh, her time, come again no more. Till the sound, the sigh of the weary Hard times, hard times, come again no more Many days you have lingered around my cabin door Oh, hard times, come again no more Oh, hard times come again no more. Okay, Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. What did I do? And John Hines.
Thanks very much to a uh, musician from Valleymore. That's great stuff. Now I'd like to call on a singer. Um, we'll have a song from Davy's sister, Vera Scali. And she might, she might be joined by Margaret, Margaret McLeod. There could be a row in the middle of this or that. We're going to have Davies going to play a few tunes with uh, Claire and his niece Michella. Thank you. 
You know, isn't it a funny thing to make the guest of honour work at his own party? <laughs> There's a man, young man sitting in the back here, and he's been sitting there quietly playing his banjo. We didn't get much of a chance to hear it, but I'm going to call him out to the front now to play a few tunes. Niall, will you come up here? <laughs> Niall attended the classes here a few years ago, and he won an All Ireland title on the banjo. and. Uh, I think he worked very hard for it and it was well deserved, so go to show us what he can do now. Well, because this day of fortnight, he was in a, a life supporting machine. <laughs> so, it's good to see you back.
Definitely, I think, uh, my mistake, but I think he should have won that All Ireland. And I'd like to call now on uh, Deirdre McGann to give us a song. <laughs> and while Deirdre's getting our larynx ready, um, just to remind you, there's a Kelly here tomorrow night with David Joe and Carousel, and as part of this little celebration, and we hope you'll all support us. Kerry called the boys that brought me shorter. Our town, it lies the mountains, and it looks out to the sea. In waking time or sleeping time, it's there I long to be, to walk again the kindly street. To man where the boys from Barishrada who hunted for the run. With cuddles stout we roamed about to hunt the Gairoli. We searched for birds with every to Druni. We jumped for joy beneath the sky. Life held no threat or plan for the boys from Bagshrodia who hunted for the ram. And now they toil on foreign and they have found their way deep in the heart of London town on a rover on Broadway and I am left to sing their songs and pleasures while I can for the boys from So here's a help to them tonight, wherever they may be. From the groves of Carnam River to the locks of Binati.
Thank you very much, David. That was fantastic. Now we've got a couple of more fellas sitting at the back, and uh, we're going to get them to come out in front, or we get a microphone into them, and let's hear a few tunes from them. Jimmy Rigney and Johnny Wire, all the way from the Tullamore side.
That's great, thanks very much, boys. We have a few good few more to get around to, so we'll keep it moving. And I'd like to call out Bert Mickey up here now. Miss Ethel Bert, I'll play for a set. And, uh, Kill for Nora set. Thank you. 
round of applause for Tigeres. Thank you very, very much. Now I think we're going to have Finnegan's Wake, and it's not the song I'm talking about. Penny McCarthy, Declan Fox, Joe Kinnear, and uh, I think it might be joining Mick Cully as well. A number of All Ireland titles. Well, it's not about All Ireland titles really, and a lot of the musicians that are here tonight learned their music at the classes, and they didn't win All Ireland titles, but they're still playing and playing great music, and isn't that most, what's most important? So. Now oh, this time, uh, I suppose that's the only thing I can do is uh, I'll try a bit of Linton first. So, um, then Paddy and Declan play a bit of music after. Jai Jilly Tai Tootin and Tool and Tatatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Lila Tatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Tatatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Lila Tatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Tatatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Lila Tatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Tatatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Lila Tatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Tatatan Lily Tai Tootin and Tool and Lila Tatan Lily Tai
Moving on, we have a few more victims, sorry, a few more people to get to play the tunes. Thanks very much, Declan. Thanks to Declan, Paddy and Joe there. And uh, I'd now like to call on uh, for a few tunes from uh, Pat Carey and Pat Conlon all the way from Tipperary and uh, Tony Kenny all the way from, uh, where's this Tony Kenny come from? I think it's for Van. And they're going to play us a few tunes.
folks. And now we're going to call all the musicians back here, and we're going to. We ran a bit over time, to be honest. We ran about an hour and a quarter longer than we expected, but sure, wasn't it worth it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to call all the musicians back together now. We're going to finish off with one hell of a great set. So anyone who has an accordion or a whistle or a fiddle or anything, and if they're not up here already, we'll get them all back up here.